time to sit back, strap in, and throw it on cruise control. This is Living the RV Dream with John and Kathy Huggins. Hello, happy campers. I'm John. And I'm Kathy. Yeah. Living the RV dream, aren't we? <laughs> this is awesome. Welcome to show number 339, brought to you by our friends at Work Camper News, helping great people find great jobs in great places. I've got to pay the bills now. Um, and they have helped us out quite a bit doing this as well. So, um, does anybody, we're, this show is going to be all about questions that you might have. You can ask us basic personal questions, or you can ask us RVing questions. It's up to you. So if you would raise your hand if you have anything. Uh, the first question I got asked yesterday is, what do you do for lunch? How many have trouble with lunch? Oh, we have one. I don't. <laughs> John, well, John's a sandwich. He loves sandwiches. He can eat them every day, all day long. I'm not a big sandwich fan. So um, what we do a lot of times is we have brunch. And we'll have breakfast between 9 and 10. And then we have like a dinner. We do dinner at uh, 3 to 4 in the afternoon. And that way we get two meals a day. That satisfies the lunch and the dinner kind of portion of the day. So it's an option. Another option that I do is your turn. You decide what we're going to have for lunch. You figure it out. Burger and King. You, and you can serve me. <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> All those kinds of things. So anybody have a question? Oh, Mr. Califer. You're going to take a picture? All right. We'll smile big here. Steve. Steve. Don't yes. turn it on and off. Okay. Just leave it on. You got it. Hold on a second. I see you. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name's Teresa, and I'm originally from California, but since we're full-timers, we're from everywhere. But, oh, okay. I just wanted to ask you, what is your favorite place you've RV'd at? Oh. Glacier. Uh, we have found Glacier National Park to be one of our favorite places. We like kind of peace and quiet places. We're not into, uh, we went to Yellowstone, and for me it was just bubbling mud. Um, <laughs> and you know, I know a lot of people love it, and I understand that. But Glacier National Park was one of the most beautiful places we ever went, and uh, Lake Mary was just smooth, and it was lapping water, and it was just like so relaxing. Yeah. And we were very fortunate as we went up on the Sun Road, which was open by the time we went. Uh, we saw some people wanting to, uh, they were going to hike. And the big thing in Montana is there's an 11-mile trail that everybody hikes. They love to hike this trail at the first of the year. You know, the first once the Sun Road opens, they get themselves up there and they hike this trail. So uh, they didn't get on the bus. There's a parking area, and then the bus takes them up to the top, and then they hike down to the back to this parking area. So um, I said, do you all need a ride? We're going to the top. We're not hiking, but we're going to the top. And she said, oh, that'd be great. So they got in her car. Well, her father was the superintendent on the Sun uh, Road uh, going to the Sun, Sun Road. Road Highway for almost 40 years. So everywhere we went around a bench, she said, oh, this happened here, and this is how they built that, and this is how they made it. I mean, it was like a whole educational thing done in about five, about 20 minutes. It was yeah. just awesome. But that's one of our very favorite places to go. There are many, many others, but that's probably the one. <clears throat> Hi, my name's Tom, and I'm from Ohio. My wife, Renata, we're snowbirds. But I was curious how folks here found out about the rally or the gathering? Was it from the podcast? Was it from a website? I mean, I'm just wondering how people in this community get most of their information. Well, that's a good question. How did you find out? How many found out on the website? How many? How, how about on Facebook? There we go. Facebook. How about the podcast? Yeah. Ah, uh, the podcast. Yeah. Most of them were on the podcast and then the Facebook. We've been talking about this rally for well over a year before Kathy got sick. And uh, w we were thinking about it for a long time, and a bunch of people asked us to do this. And because we have such a huge Facebook group, it just made publicity that much easier between that and the podcast. So uh, I'm pretty sure almost everybody did, except for a few folks that are here in the park that we said, hey, we're having a rally, and two of them came. <laughs> so... 
I'm Greg, and I'm from Arizona, and I would like to know how you folks met and who fell in love with whom first. Oh, I don't know if we... Oh, wow. Um, you want to do this or me? I was working in Chicago for Braniff Airlines. Do you guys remember Braniff? They had all the fun, funky colors. I was re- a reservationist, and a friend of mine came up from home, and we're both s- working girls, and uh, you know we have real jobs. Not that kind, kind of, of working, working girl. girl. <laughs> And so we thought it'd be fun to go to Riverview Amusement Park. We hadn't been in an amusement park since we were kids. And we each had about $5. And we figured, well, we, you know, we can do a few things. So uh, I drove up there in my brand-new convertible, white with red interior. Oh, it was fabulous. And... Um, we decided we'd take the space ride, you know, and you got in this capsule thing in it, and we could see where everything was, so we, because it used to be a huge park, it's gone now. So we got into the space ride, and it started, and it stopped, the door opened up, he jumped in and sat down next to me, and his buddy got in and sat down next to my girlfriend. Here we are on Boot Liberty from Great Lakes Naval Station. We're dressed in our whites. We are so typical. We got tickets coming out of our pockets. And we told the guy running the ride, we said, we don't just want to get on here. Wait until a car comes by with two chicks in it. I'm a chick. She was chick number one, and I sat next to her. And And we um, were together for a couple of hours there. Well, I grew up with four brothers. And um, they were all older than I am. And John used to weigh about 145 pounds. And my first thought was, I can take him. (laughs) This guy is not going to harm me. You know, I can handle this guy. But he was very gracious and kind. And he had all these free tickets. And we thought, oh, poor sailors, you know. So we uh, spent several hours going on all the rides. And then I offered him a ride home back up to the base because I had my car. He wouldn't get in my car. He thought I'd stole it. <laughs> so, but I uh, fell in love with her car. Yeah. First first was the car, and then it was me. Uh, but about three weeks later, uh, we had a big airline strike. And Braniff and American Airlines were the only two operating in the United States. And he called me up, and he was on. Uh, he was finishing up boot camp and going into uh, school. School, and he wanted to know if I could get him on a plane. And I said, "Oh, sure, don't worry about it." So I booked forty-five seats on a flight going out of <laughs> Chicago to Washington, and uh, he was able to get on the flight. And he came back, and we started dating. Then I flew standby in the middle of an airline strike. <laughs> it didn't well, get any better. Than that. Perfect. They added a lot of extra flights, so that wasn't unusual. But but uh, Braniff had to go from Chicago to Dallas to Washington. American had to go from um, Chicago, Chicago to Detroit to Dallas uh, to Washington. So we were uh, in contact with American all the time, trying to get all our passengers to where they needed to go. But it, that's when we met. We met July fourth, fifth. Excuse me, July fifth. Got engaged August eighth, and was married November first. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about the rest of this story. <laughs> when, uh, we, we, I proposed we were going to get married, but in those days in the Navy, you had to get permission to get mm-hmm. married. So I had to put in a request to get married, and part of the process was you had to be counseled by one of the chaplains. The both of us. So we had an appointment. We went in and sat down with the chaplain. And what did he say? He said, you all have about one chance in a million of making it. He was a, he was a, a seaman apprentice, which means he got about $25 a month. Um, and uh, he was in school. And we were from, he was from the East Coast and I was from the Midwest. And so we had two very different backgrounds. But then when he got done with interviewing us, he said, you know, you're going to be that one in a million that's going to make it. <laughs> and in November, we'll celebrate our 49th anniversary. There have been a few bumps in the road <laughs> along the way, but uh, gosh, it's better now than it ever was. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, you don't next have question. that cool convertible anymore. No. <laughs> no. All right, I've got, I've got one for you. Okay. Cool. okay. Um, talk about your mental aspect today in RVing. Uh, before you started RVing, when you were working and when you guys had, you know, the jobs and stuff, and now that you've been going through it for 10 years, your mental state today and how you feel. 
especially you, Dad, because I, I used to. He, I was scared of my dad for a long time because he's that <laughs> hard, hard worker. You know, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work, and he's been ever since he's been on the road. He has totally done a 180. <laughs> he smiles more. He laughs more. We go play golf and cut up. It's it's great now. But so I just wanted to you tell everybody. So what do you want me to tell you exactly? I want you to. T- <laughs> Old age. I'm basking in the glow here. I lost track. <laughs> Talk about your mental state from before you you guys started our being to today. RVing. Well, you got to remember now when we got married. I'm a sailor, and I was trying to be every inch a sailor and do all that stupid sailor stuff, and I did it, and uh, it was it was ugly. I was not a nice person. I got out, I was a chief petty officer, and I was able to make up words and yell at people and got away with it. It was fine. So when I got home, I took care of those two, too, him and his brother. But uh, I mellowed. I really did. I had some great bosses when I got out of the Navy, and they, uh, they, they know you can't take the Navy out of the boy when you take the boy out of the Navy, but they helped. And, uh... Kathy made it so easy. <laughs> um, and we, we hated working at the end there. I was in a job that was moving production lines to Mexico. Absolutely disgusting. I'd come back from a trip and 20 more people were gone. And then I'd moved all the production with my staff and they let me go. And I'm thinking, this ain't so bad. I felt bad for about 10 seconds. And I said, now we can do whatever we want. Kathy wasn't in love with her job. And here comes a letter in the mail from a lady who wants to buy our condo. She sent it to everybody in the association. And she said, I want to pay cash. I'm coming down from Ohio with my husband. He has Alzheimer's. So we want to live where you are. I'm dialing the phone. (laughs) She was already in Florida. Came by the next day. Long story short, she bought our place. We didn't have to fix anything. She just said, "Can be you be out in sixty days?" She said, "I'm going to redo the kitchen and the bathrooms. I'm going to put all new carpeting in and paint it and everything. Just can you be out of here in thirty days?" And, and he looked night, at me, and I looked at him. We go, "Sure." But but that night we're sitting at our dinette and we're thinking, "Well, we better go buy this motorhome. We're going to be homeless here pretty soon." <laughs> so we did, and uh, the rest is history. We jumped right into a diesel pusher, and off we went. Hadn't really much got a clue except for the homework we had done for about a year or two. Right off the deep end we went. Uh Uh-oh. I don't recommend it. (laughs) Go ahead, Chris. Hi, Chris Gould uh, with my husband, Jim, of Geeks on Tour. We've been full-time RVers for 12 years, and we obviously are into computer stuff. Your Facebook group, Living the RV Dream on Facebook went viral like quickly can you just tell the experience of how you started it and what happened and how does it feel you know how we started it (laughs) who me (laughs) chris you got us on facebook and you got us a uh, a blog and uh we just said well we're doing this podcast maybe we'll get see if our followers want to get on facebook and we'll ask questions And that thing stayed at 400 people for almost a year. And then it started creeping up, and every 100, I'd give away a book. And up until it got to 2,000, I'm thinking, well, I'm running out of books here. (laughs) And when it got to about 2,500, all of a sudden, I really don't know why, it just made an exponential jump to 15,000. And there was a time when we were picking up over 100 new members every day because we were giving them information without the profanity, without all the BS that's in so many other groups. We tried to take all that drama out uh, because we're not into it and we didn't think you guys wanted to be into it either. And that's, I think, the reason that the group has continued to grow. Plus, I have seven... Absolutely top drawer admins. A couple of them are here. Yes. If you're an admin, raise your hand up and let people see. Colifers are here. Yep. 
Anybody else? Jimmy's been a huge help yeah. helping us uh, keep the Facebook group nice. I guess is the best way to say it. So it's a phenomenon, and I really couldn't explain it other than the way we did. Do you actual? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Marge Wilson. My husband Jim. We're full time RVers as of a little over thirty days. Awesome. <laughs> and we're from Moberly, Missouri. Do you actually know how many people are on the Facebook page as of a week or so ago or right now? About 28,150 as of this morning. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it varies because, because we're very strict. We'll kick off 10, 15, 20 a week because we just don't need that stuff. We've had people post pornography and we just get them out fast. If you use a lot of foul, lang- out, foul language is not needed. Calling you other people names. Your name, name calling, contention. We don't need that. That's not what our being is about. We're about having a good time and making new friends. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Next question. Yeah, I'm Jerry Walton, my wife Gail. We're from Kinston, North Carolina, and we are some timers or any timers. We get ready to take We're not full timers. Right. Uh, yesterday we visited a nearby RV dealership, and I was playing around and pulled out my keys and unlocked a brand new RV sitting there on the lot. Mm-hmm. And we've talked to other people about it. What do you recommend about changing your locks or doing something so that? Just everybody can't get in your RV when you walk away. Yeah, it's a real good point. And it's worse for the storage base. There's only like two keys for all of those. Um, a, a, any locksmith can change an RV lock set. Very easy to do. Uh, probably cost you $30, $40 for the deadbolt lock. You can buy locks for all your compartments with ACE keys. Very, very hard to uh, duplicate. Cost about 20 bucks per door. It's kind of an investment, but nobody's going to break into it. So that would be my suggestion to you, to stay secure that way. However, (laughs) don't ever lock yourself out of your rig. (laughs) I'm telling you, fortunate we did it almost one day, but one window was a little bit of jar, and an RV tech crawled in that thing and opened it up and let us in. But I've heard the horror stories from people. One of them, they had electric lock, and the dog locked it. What do you do? He was able to coax the dog back over there, and he unlocked it again. <laughs> Well-trained dog. Yeah. Wish we all had one of those, you know. Come on, give us a question. I know you got them. And none are, any question's good. It doesn't matter what it is. Hi, I'm Cheryl, and I'm here with my husband, Jim. I'm still working, so we're kind of wannabe full-timers maybe one day. Um, We've had such a wonderful time at the gathering. and I'm glad. This is, you know, your first one. Are you going to have more? Are you going to do this every year? (laughs) Thank you. Where are you, Jim? We're talking about it. Yeah. Actually, we're talking about a combined rally next year with the geeks and with the techno folks. Al will come back for us. We might have a few other surprises. So we're in talks right now. And uh, you'll find out on the Facebook group or on the podcast. Let us get through this one first. Yeah. <laughs> Let us survive this one, and then we'll... Uh, but We're the planning uh, will have to start yeah. next month, and we'll have to set a date. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Kathy Brophy from Muskego, Wisconsin, and we're part-timers wishing I was a full-timer. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. And I was wondering, uh, what are your chances of getting back on the road? Have you made any plans on... Uh, the, doctor, out. <laughs> the doctor has asked me not to travel for a year, 
And uh, But we're already talking to the people who supply my nutrition, and they can drop ship it anywhere in the United States as long as I have an address. I have to have blood work done every week, so I can do that almost anywhere. And uh, the dressing I have on my arm is a... Um, what's that Peripherally word? inserted central catheter, otherwise known as a pick line. And it has to be kept very clean because the pick line goes directly to my heart. And they don't like non-RNs changing it. But I have an RN right here who has volunteered to travel with me and take care <laughs> of me. So I may be on the road sooner than we think. Yeah. <laughs> We want to travel again. We absolutely do. Worst case, we sell this rig, we buy a home down here, probably a double-wide manufactured home, and then we get a smaller rig to where we can still travel in it, but maybe not full-time like we have been. That would be the worst case. What she didn't say is there's a marvelous new drug. There's always a new drug. It's a growth hormone. It's called Gatex, and it actually grows intestinal tissue. Kathy only has a very small fraction of her small bowel left. This stuff will grow it. Unfortunately, it will also grow polyps and other stuff. So there's a lot of testing to be done, but what it would do is help wean her off what's in that bag over there. It's called TPN. It's total parenteral nutrition. It's got dextrose and lipids and vitamins and all manner of stuff in it. And it costs, you're going to love this, $4,500 a week. Week? A week. Week. Plus, we have good insurance. Just yeah, we have great insurance. <clears throat> the drug, because what she has is such a, how many people do you think? 10,000 in the whole country survived the surgery and still are alive to have this. This drug is $300,000 a year. Our cost, 25 bucks a month. Got to love it. So, um, so. That's in the future. We actually see her doctor next Wednesday, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wednesday of next week, to see what we can do about getting her on that and some other stuff we want to discuss with them. But we want to get back out here. Yeah, This has be, been misery. I get, I, I get so jealous when I see pictures of where you've been. Oh, my and God. I think, yeah. Oh, I didn't get to see that yet. And I'm thinking, oh, i got to get back on the road. Got to get better and get back on the road. So uh, we're going to work on it real hard in the next six months and get the doctor to agree to uh, let me travel again. But we're trying to um, get all the logistics of what I would need in order so we can go to the doctor and say, well, I know I can have this drop shift and I know I can do this. We'll just have to plan our trips a little better. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to stay places a little longer, which is not a bad deal. You know, we usually move too fast anyway, so I'm not upset about that at all. But um, We wouldn't be able to ad lib it as much as we have in yeah, the past. So, uh, but we're excited. Yeah. The future looks great. Let me put it that way. The future looks very promising. Yeah. Most yes. of the people that have this die in the surgery. And of the rest, probably only 10 to 20% survive the first year. She's doing pretty good, isn't she? <laughs> Thank you. You're very kind. It's through your prayers that I am, too. Don't ever discount prayers. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Keith Cooper. This is my wife, Eileen. We're half-timers yeah. out of Titusville. Uh, my question, you, you mentioned your favorite, the favorite spot you've been to. What's your bucket list location? Well, of course, Alaska. No. We well, haven't been to Alaska. We're about uh, three-quarters through the bucket list. Uh, when we started, when we recommend all of you when you start, is to have goals every year, to sit down in January, December, and say, this year we want to try to do this and this. Don't make too much goals. You know, make it easy for you to attain. Our goal when we started our being was to visit every national park. And we've been to probably 35, 40 of them. Yeah, out of the 450 there yeah. are. So, and, and then we started going to national monuments, and we thought, well, we're going to add that our bucket list, too. So <laughs> we have every national park and every monument. I find that um, the national park system, system is such a treasure to this country that uh, we should do everything we can as RVers to support yeah. the park system. 
uh, they're fabulous parks, absolutely gorgeous. They uh, they need volunteers. Let me just put a plug in for the national park system. They're always looking for volunteers to help them. So consider working for, and they're happy to let you work for 30 days and you can move on. So consider it if you would. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Ken. I'm here with my wife, Lisa. Uh, we're from Massachusetts. We're currently living in Florida. And we didn't have so much a question, but we did want to give a shout-out to a couple of your loyal listeners. Okay. Gary, Anna, Gary and Anna Ruska, who wanted to come to the rally, but they just bought a new RV and oh. had to get it back to Massachusetts to get it inspected and registered. So oh, good for them. them. Next so, year, Sally. Yes. So You're hello, listening. Gary and Anna from Ken Gary. and Lisa. Thank Excellent. you. Okay, anybody else? Oh, we got one. Come on, we got to kill some uh, some precious time here. So nice to be here in this gathering. Jim Hollis and my wife Jan, and we've been full timing since April when our house sold in four days. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys because I've listened, I think, almost all of your podcasts. Uh, you're all about community mm-hmm. and being in community. And Kathy, one of the things you said so many times is you're going to have breakdowns, leaks, slides not going out or in, but it's about the people you meet and love. Mm-hmm. Now, what I want to know is have you had specific ways early on without these 28,000 people, <laughs> uh, you had specific ways where you may have done some caravanning with other friends and what did that look like, or or did you typically try to meet up somewhere with the friends that you met? Uh, how did you keep those friendships strong? Well, uh, the first way to make friends is to get four chairs and put them outside your rig and sit outside at night and wave at everybody, and somebody's going to come up and talk to you. Yeah, they okay? will. So that's the easiest way to make friends. And once you make those friends, then uh, you can do it through Facebook. You can say, we're headed to, you know, somewhere. The gathering. The gathering. Uh, why don't we meet? You know, we're go- our, we have friends in Alabama, and we'd say, we're going to come through Alabama, and maybe they were in northern and we were in the southern, and we'd meet somewhere and just, you know, just spend a day or two and then head on out. Uh, Facebook is a wonderful way, and uh, emailing each other is a wonderful way to communicate and get have a chance to line up again. Uh, gathering together at um, rallies and um, special events, you can find friends that would say, you can say, oh, we want to go to the Albuquerque uh, Balloon, Mus- Balloon Festival. Well, I want to go too. Okay, so one of you take charge and get some tickets and find a place to go, and you can meet up like that. We but, have found this to be a much smaller community than you might yes. think. We've made some lifelong friends work camping. Mm-hmm. Well, we keep running into those guys, not at work jobs, but just here and there. We run into them at rallies. We are escapees. We're life member of the Escapees RV Club. And probably three-fourths of the friends we have are, are skips, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. So we meet them at skip rallies, but also all over the country. I mean, we're walking through the, <laughs> through the Tampa show. Was it last year? Last year, yeah. And we're, we're out, just the two of us, looking at rigs, and somebody hollers out, that's Kathy Huggins' voice. Where are you, Kathy? <laughs> I hear you. So, so we have uh, way more friends than we even know that we do, and uh, we treasure every one of them. Uh, we really do. But it's so easy to make friends out here. And, you, you don't have to hardly work at it. You just got to have a smile, on, smile your face. on your face. Yep. And um, yeah, we recognize dogs because we, we have Charlie. <laughs> and we'll be in a park and we'll walk in a dog and I'll go, I know that dog. We've been in a park with that dog before. And so you sit and you kind of talk with each other. Oh, yeah, we were both at this park, you know, like last year. And that's how you, you know each other. But uh, just putting four chairs out, sitting out there have your soda or your wine or whatever and put a smile on your face and invite people up to meet you uh, it happens easily because that's what our is all about being outside enjoying you haven't friendships. met them yet but across the street from us you'd love that big honking bulldog that's wandering around <laughs> on their site occasionally when he's not sleeping <laughs> go ahead al 
Uh, I'm Al Hesselbart, and now from Bushnell, Florida, and for the last 20 years from Elkhart, Indiana. But I met John and Kathy through a mutual friend many years ago, and most of us know Nick Russell, and doing rallies and shows with them. But in my life, most of my best memories and successes never made it to my bucket list. <laughs> they just happened. Mm -hmm. What kind of experiences with your bucket list and all the goals you've got, what's just happened? Serendipity. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you, Al. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say... This rally would not have happened the way it did without my buddy Nick, who was here with us a year ago. I picked, we both picked their brains about doing rallies. He kept telling me, you're going to lose your shirt. Don't do it. Don't do this. Don't do that. But then when I sat down and really nailed him down, he helped us so very much. Where else would we have found out that at 2.4 pieces of pizza per person? <laughs> I mean, who knew? You know? But he's been very, very helpful to us in getting this going. And uh, we thank him yes. and Terry so very much. But I, I think, of, speaking of bucket lists, you want to have a goals, but you don't want to make your goals so important that you miss things that, you know, like the biggest ball of string. You've got to stop and see that, you know, or John Wayne's birthplace. Uh, yeah. God, be still my heart. <laughs> but, you know, you can easily pass by a lot of these things. And talking with your neighbors and friends and uh, ask them where they've been in, in the last month and what did you enjoy? What was your favorite thing to go see? And it's um, it's amazing some of the, the new places that you didn't know about that you'll learn about from the new friends that you make. Uh, there's a big a ball of rubber bands, too, somewhere. I haven't gotten there yet. That's kind of on my bucket list. That's my second bucket list, <laughs> you know. Uh, so talk with everybody. I mean, we have the best opportunity here. We've got people that have been out 12 years and people that have been out 30 days. And you can get so much information from the, Either people, way. Yeah, from the people around you that just to kind of excite you and light you up and go, oh, we're going to do that. Yeah. Uh, my biggest regret so far is I haven't made it to Alaska. And um, I kept trying to get him to go, and he wouldn't go. So I don't know if we're going to be able to do that one. But uh, Well, it could be a cruise. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a Living the RV Cruise to Alaska. Would that be good? Ooh. Yes. I'll need at least 20 of you to sign up so they comp us a cabin. <laughs> <laughs> you got a question in the back, Steve. I saw you raise your hand and put it back down again. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Jan Hollis, the other part of Jim. And uh, I, actually, my question, the reason I raised my hand was you said 20 of you have to go to Alaska, and I was going to offer my services to be one of those 20 immediately. Um, no, I, I want to go back to something that was, it's not quite as happy, but it is something we at this age all probably have on our minds. And that is you've gone through a pretty serious uh, medical situation in this last year. How were you, were you, I know you weren't here when that mm -hmm. happened and you weren't near family. So what tools did you use to help you find the services you need and make the decisions that got you where you are now? Well, um, that's kind of an easy one, actually. <laughs> We knew that they wanted, once I was in the hospital for 30 days, and they wanted transmitted transmit rehab, and they wanted to send me to Pensacola because we were up in Alabama. And I thought, if I could do Pensacola, I'm going to have to do another whole series of doctors when I come down here. So um, the head of surgery, we talked with him, and uh, the only way I could fly down here was to fly from Alabama to Atlanta and then here. And I just I just wasn't capable. I just didn't have the energy to even sit in a wheelchair for more than 20 minutes. And John talked to the, um, the doctor and said, I have a 40-foot ambulance. You know, I've got a bed. I've got a bathroom. I've got water resources. And at first he was a little hesitant on it. And he says, okay, I'll tell you what. If I can see the RV, I'm going to let you go. So John called the kids, uh, Steve and his brother, 
they flew down, and um, at 8 o'clock on a Sunday night, <laughs> they loaded me up into the, the rig. I had spent uh, the last week trying to climb up five stairs so I could get into the rig without passing out. I made it into the rig, got into my Lazy Boy, which all of you helped pay for. If you did that $5 thing, I got me a really nice Lazy Boy. <laughs> and... Um, I got my chair, and the head of nursing came in, and she hooked me up to some saline solution, and uh, off we went. Ten hours later, we pulled into the rehab center here in Sarasota. Um, the doctors here recommended the kind of doctor, the gastro, gastroenterologist I would need for uh, what I need to be kept track of, and we have our regular doctor, so I was much more comfortable to come here and not start new. Uh, I was in rehab for 60 days and was discharged because I completed everything they wanted me to do. Then I was in home care for another 60 days and completed that, and so now I'm on my own and uh, keeping up with, with things. a little help from your honey. But and my private nurse here, who has uh, been just amazingly kind and gentle to me as I try to get my energy back. And um... But if, if you want to know why Sarasota, we lived and worked here for 10 years. So we had already established a cadre of doctors. And we have been coming back here not every winter, but... About every other winter, anyway, is we got to make sure those doctors can make a boat payment or something and remember us. So, but we we do have a great support system here. The rest of the country, we kid about it, but we leave little bits and pieces of ourselves all over the country: a gallbladder here, a small intestine there. Uh, I had my pituitary gland removed up in Hershey. Um, it's it's all God, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. We were in the right place at the right time with the right doctors. Um, it's just worked out that way. Who knew in Alabama, small town Alabama, when they loaded her in that ambulance, they took her to probably the best possible hospital she could have gone to. And during the surgery, which happened very quickly, the OR nurses are in there praying over her. This is only in Alabama. That would happen, I guarantee it. <laughs> but it's just all fallen into place. Our finding our RV, our selling our two homes at the top of the market here in Florida. It's just, it's like it was preordained for us to be out here. And one reason... Kathy decided, I asked her, to be very transparent about her condition and what happened. And I think you all know the story. This is a result of gastric bypass surgery, and it's a consequence that they don't publicize. So she had a hernia in her small bowel, probably five or six of them, and finally it shut off the blood supply and... Uh, they call it ischemia, and it's a very, very serious thing because of the sepsis that sets in. And had they not operated on her within 40 minutes, she, would, she wouldn't be here today. But again, it's just all fallen into place. And you need um, a plan of action. You know, be prepared. Uh, you may have something not as bad as this, but you may break a leg. What are you going to do? You know, sit down with each of your husbands and wives. Sit down together. If you're single, sit down and think, okay, if I were to break my leg and not be able to travel, what would we do? Fortunately, I have two sons that both love our RV. <laughs> one, one a lot more than the other. Yeah. <laughs> and Steve had driven trucks in when he was in the Air Force, so he, he was comfortable driving the RV. And so we had an action plan. We knew what we were going to do. And uh, it takes a lot of pressure off of you if you plan ahead for these things. And it may never happen. You may just have nothing ever happen that you need help with. But if you have a plan of action and you talk to your children or a neighbor or a friend and say, if we ever have this, can you come and help us? And they'll say yes. And then you know it's peace of mind to have yeah. the plan ready. You know, and talk with each other. That's why, I, you know, ladies learn how to drive your RV. 
Don't be afraid of it. It's not that hard. It's practice, practice, and more practice. And have good insurance. <laughs> Health insurance, towing insurance, rig insurance. Have good insurance. It's worth the money. Yeah. But I don't recommend driving from 8 in the evening till 8 in the morning, morning yeah. when you haven't driven one in a long, long time. Because I remember at about 5.30 in Tampa, heading this way, I remember feeling the burn going, oh, God, please let me make it to the rest area so Dad can get in and drive the rest of the way. Oh, please, oh, please. You know, With so. really dim, lousy headlights. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't drive at night in our RV. We just, we had this rule when we started off. We're off the road by 3 in the afternoon. Yep. 4 at the very, very latest. There's no reason to be driving in the dark. You get a better spot at the campground if you get off early. Um, you have time to meet people if you get off early. If you're only spending a night or two, you have time to get your chairs out there and meet some folks. So uh, we made a decision very early on that we just were not going to drive at night. Uh, it just wasn't comfortable for us. It's okay. Go ahead. Don't All mind right. me. Thank you. So it's you know those are decisions that you, as you, the more you RV, the more you'll make those decisions. The more you'll plan so you don't have to drive at night. The more you'll plan to um, you know talk to your sons and daughters or aunts and uncles or whoever would be willing to come and help you to uh, if there was a need for you to get home or get back to the doctors that you like that you could do that. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi. I'm. Barnett and my wife Susan and we're part-timers and we're really glad to be here and we're really glad you're here you know directing us and guiding us through this thank you uh, one of the questions that uh, I've thought of was can you describe your biggest fiasco or or emergency on the road with a with your RV besides what happened to Kathy oh yes besides the health <laughs> more mechanical or uh, or technical oh we've had our share oh yeah which one, which, t oh, I know which time. One of our three attempts to go to Yosemite. We talked about that this morning, so I think everybody's heard that one. Did you tell them the whole story? Yep. Okay. How that was a bad one, but a funny one. Uh, we've been towed four times, three. three, four times, easily. When we go to an escapee's escapade... It rains. It always rains, and we always get towed out of the space we're in. <laughs> Never much fun. Guaranteed. We even spent two extra days there figuring the water would drain and it would harden up, you know. The minute we started to go, the whole back end sunk in. I, I think the scariest time... I have a bank system installed on this oh, motor yeah. system, a chip for the diesel, and it worked great for about the first seven months. Something happened, and all of a sudden, I'm putting down a white smoke screen like you would not believe. I thought we'd swallowed a, an injector or something, but I was able to bypass the system, and everything went back to normal. Um, that was extremely, extremely scary. That was the first time we were towed. And we got towed to a place, a truck repair place, who weren't very good. And we sat there for a week, and fortunately, CoachNet came through for us again and towed us out of there and down to a Freightliner dealer where they diagnosed a fuel pump problem and got us back on the road again. But we were beginning to wonder if we were going to be living in that truck stop for the rest <laughs> of our lives. But we've been very fortunate. We have not had the catastrophes that some folks do, waiting 10 weeks, 15 weeks for repairs. I don't think it would ever happen to us because we're going to live in that rig and we're going to be the squeaky wheel. Fix it now because we're going to be camped in your doorstep. <laughs> it's the best way to get it done. Anybody else? Who else we got? How about talking about uh, red roads and highways? Uh -huh. and why you guys choose red roads rather than highways? Yeah, we, we'll drive on an interstate, but we love the red roads, the U.S. highways in particular. Um, there's more cool stuff to be seen on U.S. highways. Loads and loads of county fairgrounds mm -hmm. are on the U.S. highways. They almost all have a place to camp. Some of them are very nice campsites. Some are less than stellar. But there's always something going on in a campground. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in a fairground. County park. I mean, we've seen softball tournaments, 
practices for horse shows, all manner of stuff. Yeah. We were we were in Colorado, and we stopped at uh, a county park, and we pulled in, and we heard all this cheering going on. So I wonder, you know, what's going on? So we got out of the rig, walked over, and here they're having this big soft girls softball tournament. So we sat down and cheered the home team. Yeah, you know? we had a great time. We met a lot of new people, talked with them about who we were and what we were doing. Had a great time. It was a lot of fun. You want to talk about the hometown cafes? Oh, yeah. One of the best places to find out about the area you're in, especially if it's kind of a small town, is find a little cafe, like the 25-cent cafe we have over here, and start talking to the locals. At first, they're going to kind of look at you and go, you know, who are these folks? They're not usually here. I wonder what they want. But if you smile and say hi to everyone, and the waitress will say, you know, where are you from? And you start talking to them. We were in one, and I think we ended up with 25 people around the table, and they were telling us all the stuff to go see it within 30 miles of this town. I mean, there was old Joe down the road. He, he collected uh, tractors. Another guy had uh, beehives. He t- she'd show us all about his beehives and how all they worked. And We passed on that. Yeah, we weren't too <laughs> sure about that one. But it's a huge opportunity to find out about where you are, and especially small town America. They're great. They're yeah. fabulous people, and they're, they're just happy to have you in their town and show you what their town's all about, and they love to brag on it. Yeah. We like to visit the um, city halls, especially in the Midwest, they have some oh beautiful gosh, yeah. county seats and city halls that are just magnificent. Uh, there's one that's eight sided. It's the only eight sided building in the United States. That's in Pittsfield, Illinois. No, no, we I'm, have somebody from right Pittsfield there, right, there right we here. Are right there, Pittsfield. And um, you could walk in, and you you know somebody will say, "May I help you?" And I say, "Well, we just want to see this," and you, you get the whole thing about yeah. the history of the building. You know, so just keep a smile on your face and realize that you don't know everything. And people like to impart what they have that's yeah. special about their town. I think you guys also have an original Carnegie Library there, too, do you not? I could be mixing up my towns. There's I'm not a, sure. I'm not aware of it. But There are a ton of original Carnegie Libraries that he funded all over the Midwest, and some of them are gorgeous buildings that have these libraries in them. And we used to use libraries a lot for our communication needs. We could walk in, they all had Wi-Fi of some sort, all had internet connectivity. A couple of times they said, no, you've got to get a library card. All right, sign me up. No, you're not in our state. Your driver, so all right, we'll move on. But libraries are a great place to get connected on the road. I don't see many hands. Come on, we got about ten more minutes to go. Talk about um, uh, going into military installations huh. and how you guys do that. Military family campgrounds. Um, John is retired military, so that uh, we have the opportunity to be able to camp at the fam camps. And like any group of campgrounds, some are very, very nice and some are less than stellar. (laughs) (laughs) We We have a book that names all the campgrounds and how to get into them. And like any directions that you get for any campground, call the campground and say, what's the best way to get into your campground? GPS lies. Oh, totally. And it might send you down a road that you really don't want to be on or a bridge that's way too low. You don't want to get going downhill and then look and, you know, it's only nine feet high and you're 12. So uh, when we travel about noon, uh, we sit down and have our lunch and we say, oh, we'll do another 100 miles. And I look at the cities in that general area, and I call the campgrounds. I look at the rating on the campground and the price and the Woodalls, our all stays. And uh, I call the campground to make a reservation, and I always ask them, can you tell me what's the best way to enter your campground? Sometimes they take you around the block because the turn isn't that easy to go left. Yeah. It's easier to do right or vice versa. But the campgrounds are glad to help you pull in in a easy way rather than the difficult difficult way. Yeah. <laughs> there are um, some places that told us to go this mountain route to get to the campground. He said, oh, no, no, if you go straight around the mountain, you get a straight shot up and you're here. You know, so say, that saved us a lot of turning and wear and tear. You remember our first fam camp? Mm-hmm. Six o'clock in the morning, 
Here comes Reveille, <laughs> Reveille. <laughs> They're playing the national anthem, and I mean, it's wakey, wakey, wakey. Um, blaring right in your window. Yeah. The, the microphone was right there in the fam camp. So uh, everybody got to sit up in the salute and lay back down and go back to sleep. And if you went to bed a little early... You're going to be wakened up again because they're going to play taps on that same loudspeaker says, You know about this, Angel. So it's all good. I mean, we love fam camps. We love finding military folk. We, we can always swap sea stories with them. But uh, I, we've only been in one or two campgrounds about I four. would never go back to. Oh, yeah. One or two, yeah. And those weren't fam camps. No. Those were... Some places out in the Midwest that were just wide spots in the road that should have never been a campground. Yes, ma'am. Hi. My name's Arlene Teague, and I'm not a full-timer, but um, I'm six weeks on the road now. I travel by myself. And so my question is, um, it sounds like you guys are a little bit flexible as to where you're going to stay. Always. Um, and I'm a little bit nervous about doing that because obviously I can't look something up when I'm on the road by myself. Um, so how do you how do you center in on a campground? Um, what do you look for? Because that's it, it, I've been kind of hit and miss. Mm-hmm. I found some that I've liked, but I've also found that you know when I got there, the pictures didn't necessarily yeah. look like what it did in real life. Somehow <laughs> these photographers lay down and take the best shot of the whole place. Yeah. Um, we have a Woodalls, a big Woodalls camping guide, and they rate. They have a rating system. And I look at the rating system, and uh, we don't do anything lower than a 7.9 or something like we that. We also use rvparkreviews.com. Mm-hmm. You have to be careful with that because you've got people writing five-star reviews and one-star reviews. So throw out the top two and the bottom two, and there you go. That's your score. And to talk to people. If you know you're headed to Little Rock, Arkansas, you can say, you know, this is where, you know, in a group like this, this is where I'm headed. Do you know of a good campground? And everybody has found one good campground somewhere, yeah. you know, that they've really enjoyed. Uh, there's also the Corps of Engineer Parks. There's also they are uniformly good. State parks, uh, county parks, those are all listed in the Woodalls that you can kind of check yeah. on too to see. Arlene, uh, are you tied into any of the solo groups? Um, I have joined some, but I haven't really uh, met up with any of them yet. I think that's where you can get a great deal of information. Um, from other folks in the same situation. I mean, obviously, women. you're going to have to pull over and stop and, and look and make a phone call. So uh, I would try to hook up with those folks. The escapees solos is one good one. RVing and there are women, others. women RVing, I think it is. Yeah. They're an excellent group. Um, RVing women. We, we basically say we travel 200 to 250 miles a day. And that's when I get the map out. This is about 250. At lunchtime, if we've met the goal that we want to, uh, I know that we'll get there, our 250 by that evening or that afternoon. That's when I start looking because we, we always stop and eat lunch, take our time. Uh, we can spend an hour at a rest area. Sometimes we take a nap. Yeah. You know, if we're only going to go another <laughs> 25 miles down the road, we're a little tired, we'll lay down and take a nap for a little while. And uh, then call ahead and talk to the, the camp. Make sure that they have space. Another thing, never try to go into campground on a Friday, especially no. a Friday night. You just are going to have a summertime Friday night campground. It's a zoo. If you can, try to be uh, Wednesday or Thursday, park through the weekend. Then you get a nice spot, and uh, you're secure for the weekend. You don't have to worry yeah. about running into campgrounds being too full in that area. Does that answer your question? Excellent. Uh, Marco Prieto, I'm here with my wife, Michelle. Uh, We're part-timers from Brooksville, Florida. And my question to both of you is, if you could only join one organization, one entity uh, regarding RVing, which would it be and why? Wow, that's a tough one because we would join Escapees first. But Escapees is an RV club, even though they have some campgrounds. As far as campground associations, 
Yeah, well, escapees first, Passport America second. We don't get much out of uh, Good Sam or FMCA. We are members. But escapees are full-timers. They understand what we're doing. They got one of the best magazines out there. And great, great folks in there. So that's my choice, Kathy. Yeah, I think this uh, for us, the escapees groups have helped us the most to get started. Um, we use Passport America a lot because we really like it. We tend to do a lot of traveling uh, in September, October, and April and May because the kids aren't out of school yet. And you, uh, the weather's usually pretty good almost everywhere. So you can get into a spot. You can see all there is to see, and you're not bumping up against you know, a truckload of children. But it's, it's not that we don't like children. We just want to be able to go see something without kids screaming and hollering and running around. And we have found those two months to be, those four months to be the best time to sightsee. Yeah. Uh, during the summer, a lot of times we'll spend three months in one spot if we find a beautiful place. Again, uh, we get to know people. Uh, we're not out on the road with all the crazies that uh, we've, we've been behind people that have no clue how to drive their RV, how to tow their trailer, how to, how to tow their fifth wheel. It's, it's frightening. You know, we back way. We were behind <laughs> one trailer. That guy was using both the lanes, just going back and forth. And you think, stop, just stop your RV and get it lined up again or something. So um, those things happen. And uh, you have to figure out what's going to work for you, what you two like to do, or you like to do on your own best. Uh, but the best thing I can tell you is get a goal. Decide, I want this year I'm going to Key West. And make that your goal. Take your time in January and February when the wet, weather's bad up north. If you're down here or even if you're up north, sit on and map it out. And just remember, you don't have to do... 500 miles a day. You don't have to get there on August 10th. You can get there on the 11th or 12th. You know, uh, we always say our schedule's made in jello because sometimes we just like where we are and we stay there. Yep. We don't worry about moving on. We just stay where we are and relax and have a good time. Or we've met some couples that we're enjoying. We're playing cards at night or uh, going out to eat with them. And we just stay a little longer. You know, uh, that's what RVing is about is being able to relax and enjoy, make new friends, see the United States. Got see time the... for one more quick one. Okay. So, um, you know, the best thing we can tell you to do is relax. Don't get worried about everything. It'll all work out. If it's going to happen, it happens, and it all works out in the end. Anything else? Anybody else? we got else? time for one more quick question. Hi, my name's Ron, originally from Wisconsin, here with my wife, Terry. Been full-time and for a little over a year. A lot of that's due to what we've learned from you guys, Nick Russell, and a lot of others. One question that we asked a lot of people that we interviewed when we were going full-time, if you had to start all over again, what would you do different? Not a whole lot, really. We would, we would have started 10 years sooner. <laughs> well, that's the standard escapee answer. Yeah. It's what we got when we asked the same question. Only I said, you've told us all this good stuff. Skeptical me said, what's the downside? And four people at the same time. We should have done it 10 years sooner. I think we... we would have researched a lot more. We researched for two years, but there's a lot we didn't know and understand. Uh, I think we would have researched a little longer even than we did. I think uh, I'd be driving a Newmar instead of a Fleetwood. Yeah, you know, the, there are things that we, we've learned so much out here and talking with people, and um, that's about the only thing we might change is do a little more research and understanding how uh, how the, the RV would work for us as far as living in it. We, we have changed out the entire inside of our RV to make it work for us, and we could have bought one that was a little more already friendly. Yeah, we'd love a few more horsepower and a couple, three more slides, but... We're okay. You know, it's easy to want, but that rig has been very comfortable and still is for 10 years, so we're happy. Well, we've got about one more minute. Anybody got a quick question? Or a thought, even. Steve's quick. There he, he can is. get to you. All right. Are you going to the Super Show this year? Yes. Okay. We will be at the Tampa Super Show. We will 
entertain folks we know or folks we'd like to know probably on Saturday. May not do two days of it. But, yes, we are planning to be at the Super Show this year. I want to see what new is out there. I'm always yeah. curious, you know. So, um, yes, that's that's an absolute plus. Well, we have had a good time doing this. Thank you, everyone. We, we appreciate, do appreciate it. it. Give yourself a hand. Steve, you've been great. Thank you for hauling that microphone all over the place. That's been awesome. This has just been fun. I know. I, I'm looking now. I'm really starting to look forward to doing this again next year. It's just getting better and better. <laughs> Easy for me to say, you know, but Kathy does a lot of the work. So uh, thank you. You do for that absolutely. Recognition. Well, we are John and Kathy, living the RV dream and loving the RV lifestyle. So God, God bless you and, and go, go RVing. That's all, folks. Uh, do remember to subscribe. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and share with your friends and comment below. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, so follow me there, too, if you will. And visit the blog at roadnomad.com. Join the mailing list. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. I'm riding, riding with my RV. Wherever I want to be Because I'm free in my RV Yeah, I'm riding, riding, riding Riding with my RV, my RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free in my RV